Welcome to the Lose Weight, Live Life podcast. If you're someone who would do anything to lose weight, yet finds it impossible to stick to a diet, to eat less, or just what you think you should, this podcast is for you. I am your host, certified life and weight mindset coach, Claire McKenzie. Listen in to learn how to stop overeating, lose weight for the last time, and create a relationship with food and yourself that you love, all without diet deprivation and self-sabotage. Hi everyone and a very warm welcome to podcast episode number 93. Today's episode is for you if you think that you have a lot of weight to lose and I'm so pleased to be back after my summer podcast break. We've been enjoying a little extra time together as a family over the past few weeks with school and university finishing. Time has included a fun weekend away in London and making the most of the warmer weather. I wanted to do this episode on when you have a lot of weight to lose after the topic came up inside of the Lose Weight Live Life Academy a few weeks ago. The topic came up because members were sharing how they felt challenged to get started and move forward on their weight loss journey because they thought they had a lot of weight to lose and they were asking for help to get them unstuck. Thoughts that come up for these members included, it feels like an insurmountable hill to climb. It's going to be a long time before I see or feel progress. I've not done it before because I've always quit or given up or failed before. And so it's difficult to believe I can do it this time. What's the point of depriving myself when I'll end up back where I am now? And I can certainly relate to all of these. I know that feeling of having thoughts about the fact that you are so far away now from where you want to be that you don't want to take this journey forward to get you there because it's going to be so difficult and unbearable and you're going to feel deprived and miserable. This unfortunately is how so many of us feel about focusing on losing weight or eating more healthily because of our previous experience of dieting, our previous experience of restricting what we eat according to the latest book or plan that we allowed to dictate how we ate. As we know, one of the problems with following a diet in the way that many of us have done before is that we quickly notice that we're in conflict with the diet. We tell ourselves that we will eat according to how the diet dictates, but then find that we cannot stay true to that promise to ourselves whilst living life. We find that we have hard choices to make, such as choosing to maybe A, decline a social invitation to go out with a friend for her birthday so that we can adhere to our diet versus maybe B, go along and drink water and the very unappetizing version of a salad on the menu whilst everyone else eats and drinks what they want and what we desire. Or C, break our diet because the restaurant the friend chose doesn't fit with our diet plan and we don't want to not join in. We get to choose between feeling guilty because we let her down feeling miserable because we're missing out on a fun evening, feeling embarrassed or ashamed or uncomfortable at the prospect of sitting there not eating and drinking, or eating and drinking and enjoying ourselves only to feel that we were wrong the next day when the number goes up on the scales. It feels as though whichever option we choose, we're not doing it right. And even if we get through that occasion, we likely find ourselves facing another similar one just a few days later. But maybe this time we're having to take a client to dinner and we feel we have even less choice about how we handle the situation. So we stick it out as long as we can until we give up. Then we quit the diet, we feel like a failure, we feel miserable and totally stuck because we cannot see a way forward. So is it any wonder that if this has been our past experience, we find the prospect of another weight loss journey, especially when we think we have a lot of weight to lose, totally daunting? By the way, the amount of weight that you have to lose is irrelevant to how likely you are to be thinking you have a lot of weight to lose. Thinking I have a lot of weight to lose is an optional thought, not a fact. And given that thinking we have a lot of weight to lose leads us to feel afraid or hopeless or frustrated. And of course, how you feel if you have this thought will be unique to you. But I guess it's going to be an emotion that you would rather not have, that you would rather not be feeling. So I want you to consider that thinking this way, if you are, does not serve you and it is also optional. You are empowered to redirect your brain to a different thought when you notice it's stuck on how much you have to lose. Instead, you could focus your thinking towards how great it will be 
when you discover how you want to eat to manage your weight for life or how your health will improve when you lose just a portion of the weight that you want to lose. Focusing on the positives that you're looking forward to will make it so much easier to do things that will help you. Notice the stories that you have running in your head. Do they help or hinder you achieving whatever it is that you want? You might also want to ask yourself why it's a problem that you have, insert whatever the number is, amount of stones or stones and pounds to lose. The answers you give to this question will be quite revealing and will guide you to where you may want to focus your efforts. And by efforts, I mean your solution-focused thinking. For example, your brain might focus on the fact that it's a problem because it's an indication of your declining health and you're fearful of what will happen if you don't stop the decline and improve your health. Or your brain may tell you it's a problem because you don't trust yourself to stick with it. Or your brain may tell you it's a problem because it will take too long. So if you're worried about your health, focus on the detail. What specifically are you worried about? Is it your cholesterol, your blood pressure, your HbA1c levels, which is the amount of glucose in your blood? Once you know how you can take more control, for example, there are lots of things you can be doing alongside reducing your eating to help you with all of these and planning for that. Rather than being stuck in fear of having too much weight to lose, it's, which is going to help you your health and importantly, help you to feel better too. And you can dig deeper into the other reasons too, so that you can put strategies in place for those when you notice they come up for you. Okay, so take a quick audit of where you are at with your weight loss. Whether you're in the middle of your weight loss journey, about to get started, or telling yourself it's something that you should, and I say that in inverted commas, but you're putting it off until after the summer maybe, because then there will be fewer social occasions and no holiday to contend with, etc., etc. Notice the story that you're telling yourself. I want you to ask yourself what you expect your experience of weight loss to be and how do you expect to feel as you work at losing weight. If you're not enjoying it or you're thinking it's going to feel awful, if you're bracing yourself for a period of misery, deprivation and endurance, then it's time to pause and give yourself a break and know that you have the option of creating a weight loss journey that is more, shall we say, palatable. A weight loss journey that you sometimes love, a weight loss journey that sometimes feels easy. Notice I say sometimes love and sometimes feels easy. Like anything in life that requires a change, there are going to be moments that feel difficult and challenging, but these moments don't need to be at the expense of feeling joy, love, ease, pride, capability or capable, successful, and lots of other feel good emotions too. With dieting, we're so used to being at the effect of the diet, but when you work at losing weight in the way that we do inside of the Lose Weight Live Life Academy, you put yourself in control. You're in control, not only of eating the way that you want to eat, but also in control of how you want to feel as you move step by step along the path of creating the relationship with food that you want. And there are two paths to creating this empowered weight loss journey. The first is that you start by addressing all your default ways of being when you're working at losing weight. And the second is that you start from scratch with thinking anything is possible and designing the experience that you want. So starting with the first, that is looking at your default ways of being, start with noticing all of the reasons why you don't want to start or you don't want to be on a weight loss journey. What makes that journey hard or difficult? What creates the feelings of deprivation or misery? How do you typically judge yourself when you're losing weight? What's going to be difficult about it? Write your answers to these questions down on paper. You want to see what these thoughts are that are creating the dread, the anticipated misery, the resistance. When they're in your head, they are one swirling mass and you can't see what's true and what's not true about them. When you get them down on paper, you can start to examine them, understand them and discredit them. So here are some examples of what these thoughts may look like. These are thoughts that either I or members of the Academy have shared. I can't eat what I want. I feel miserable. I'll miss out on social occasions. I'll feel deprived. I don't have time to prepare the kinds of meals that I need to eat to lose weight. I can't not eat cake that people bring in when it's their birthday at work. I don't want to miss out on eating delicious food on holiday. 
Even if I massively cut out all the foods, I won't lose weight. I don't want to be hungry. I'll have nothing to look forward to. Even when I try hard, I don't see the results that I want. I don't trust myself. I just can't do it. When you have your thoughts down on paper, stop and look at them. These thoughts, your thoughts, your thinking is the reason why you are either avoiding getting started on your weight loss journey or hating every minute of your current weight loss journey or continually starting and giving up your weight loss journey. When you change your mindset, how you're thinking about it, everything will all become so much easier. And that's what we actually were focusing on last month inside of the Lose Weight Live Life Academy, helping you identify your thinking and showing you how to upgrade it so that you could replace your hindering mindset with a helpful one. So how do we do that? Well, first you need to examine the thoughts you have that will likely feel factual and true to you so that you can show yourself A, that they're not in fact true and B, that they are optional and that you have the power to change them. So pick one of the thoughts that you wrote down to examine. I'm going to take the first thought, I can't eat what I want. Millions of people in the world right now are thinking the thought, I can't eat what I want. If this is a thought you believe, I want you to spend some time thinking about it and exploring it with me now. So first of all, how is it true and how is it not true? Your response may look something like this. It's true that I cannot eat what I want because if I eat chocolate and crisps and drink wine and eat cake every day, I will not lose weight. If I eat biscuits whilst watching television every night, I will not lower my cholesterol levels. I can't even have ice cream once a week without gaining weight. And what I want you to see, if you can relate to these thoughts, is knowing that you cannot eat all the things and lose weight does not mean that you cannot eat what you want. You can eat everything and anything that you want, but you may not like what eating, what you tell yourself you want to have, does to your body or to the numbers on the scales or to your health. Now that does not mean that you can't eat what you want. So stop telling yourself that. Instead, remind yourself that you are fully empowered to choose how you want to eat. You can choose eating one way, knowing the weight and health outcome of that, or you can choose to eat another way. When you equate not being able to eat all the things and lose weight to, I can't eat what I want, you do yourself such a disservice. You're never gonna find a resolution that feels good. As Byron Katie says, when you argue with reality, you only lose 100% of the time. Now, being stuck feeling deprived that you cannot eat what you want or feeling entitled to be able to eat all that you want without the outcome it creates is akin to spending life feeling miserable because you don't have the money to fly everywhere in a private jet and own 10 houses. You could feel deprived that you cannot do that and entitled that, to think that you should be able to but what good would that do you? You would be suffering needlessly. And the same is true when we think this way about our eating. So instead of thinking, I can't eat what I want, you can instead focus on thinking, I wonder how I might eat to lose weight and enjoy my food. I wonder how often I can enjoy chocolate or ice cream or wine, whatever it is that you want, and still be healthy and nourished and lose weight. You are empowered to take control of your weight loss journey and eat the way that you want to eat to create the weight loss results and relationship with food that you want. Okay, so that's just an example of what it looks like to explore a thought and notice how it's keeping you stuck. Those of you who are members in the academy, you will know this, but if you're new or if you're new to the podcast, then this is going to be enlightening for you. It's not the fact that you have, whatever the number is, or more stone to lose, that's making it difficult for you. It's your thoughts about it being a lot of weight, your thoughts about what the process should or will be like, your thoughts about your capability to do what it takes to lose weight and your trust in yourself. Something else that sometimes accompanies thinking along the lines of I have a lot of weight to lose are feelings of shame. Sometimes when we think we have a lot of weight to lose, we judge ourselves, whether it's because we think we're too big or because we think we should not have allowed ourselves to gain so much weight, these are the thoughts that we have, or because of our thoughts about how we look in a certain clothes, or thoughts about a specific part of our body, or thoughts about our health and being responsible for creating poor health. When you're feeling shame, it's often because you're making the fact that you're overweight mean that you are flawed or wrong in some way. You think you should have known better, or you think that you're weak-willed or out of control. All sorts of things can come up. And it's important to work through this thinking and make peace with where you find yourself. Because being in judgment of yourself makes it more difficult for you 
to help yourself move forward. Self-judgment is like a coating of really sticky cling film layered over your habits and behaviors and ways of being. Whilst the self-judgment is there, you cannot get to what lies beneath. Self-judgment makes it so much more difficult to do the work to create the relationship with food that you want. That's why I think it's important for everyone to know it's not their fault that they are the weight that they are. And at the same time, important for everyone to know that they are the only person who can resolve what has been going on for themselves to create the weight loss results and the weight loss journey that they want. Now, this might sound like a contradiction. How can I be blameless and yet still responsible for resolving the problem? How can I relinquish myself of all blame whilst taking responsibility for what comes next? I choose to believe the reason I was overweight, morbidly obese, was because my body and brain were not designed to live in the food environment in which we find ourselves today. And by that, I mean an environment of highly refined foods available 24-7. I chose to believe the reason that I ate to feel better was because of how my brain is wired to seek pleasure in the form of dopamine from food and avoid emotional discomfort. And that is not my fault that my brain is wired that way. And I believe that my hormones were particularly sensitive to foods high in refined carbohydrates and added sugars. Again, that's not my fault. Oh, and of course, I also grew up in a world where it was normal to eat to celebrate everything and anything. And again, that's not my fault. And I could go on. But ultimately, I did not create this environment and I did not have a manual given to me in terms of how to navigate it without overeating. And so I found myself morbidly obese at age 40. And I have let go of the shame and guilt that I had felt for years and decades because I truly believed it was, of course, all of my fault. Okay, but I've let go of that shame and that guilt. And that's a really important part. Oh, it was a really important part of my weight loss journey. And yet knowing what I know now, I believe it's within my power to design a way of working that works for me to be the weight that I want to be. So if you can relate and feel guilt and shame about anything to do with your size or weight, I really encourage you to spend some time thinking how you can make it so that it's not your fault. It really will make it easier for you to get started or continue with your weight loss journey when you do so from a place of seeking to understand yourself and having compassion. And one more thing, when you're stuck on focusing how much weight you have to lose, how you shouldn't have let your weight get so bad, how awful it's going to be to lose it, all of those things, you've got no mental capacity and energy left for doing the things that are going to help you take those next steps to get closer to where you want to be. You're effectively draining your battery on all the stuckness and negativity, and you've got nothing left to be doing all of the things you could be doing to make it easier. And you have the power to change that but you have to work at it. It doesn't come naturally because you're so used to being in that stuck space, being in that space of thinking it's too difficult because you have so much weight to lose will on some level feel familiar and comforting to you. But that space is based upon past experience and your past experiences are what have got you to where you are today. So in order to shift out of that, you have to start doing some things differently. And here are just a couple more things. Firstly, learn to talk to yourself more than you listen. You've got a lot of inner dialogue running through your head, telling you all sorts of things about yourself that lead you to feel a certain way. Rather than just listening to all of that, learn to talk back to yourself from being your own inner mentor. Number two, focus on the weight loss journey that you want rather than the weight loss journeys that you've experienced previously. Design the perfect weight loss journey for you. That is within your power to do that. Number three, know that your weight loss journey never actually stops and starts. Your weight loss journey is you living life and either eating in a way that takes you a step closer to being the weight that you want to be and the health that you want to be or a step further away from it. Every single decision you make is creating your journey every hour of every day. Okay, that is what I wanted to talk to you about today. I wish you an amazing week and take care. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast and are ready to live a more intentional life, lose weight as a part of that journey and create a relationship with food and yourself that you love, then I would be honored to have you join the Lose Weight Live Life Academy membership and coach with me. The program offers different levels of support to suit you, including self-paced learning, twice weekly calls, private coaching, an amazingly caring community, and lots more. Find out all the details about when and how you can join at 
thebestyou.coach forward slash coaching.